uh, two scriptures I just want to share. One's Galatians 6, 7. Uh, and these, both of these scriptures I've, have changed my life. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. And then Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Y'all are quick on these scriptures. <laughs> um, and so from both of these, we, we could kind of put together a, a principle in the Bible. You, you reap what you sow. And what you think in your heart, that's what you become like. That's why when Jesus said, murder begins in the heart, is because it depends on the choices that we make in here. What, I'm, what am I going to allow to, to, to stay in my heart and in my mind? And it's the same in Judah's life too. And so we'll just go through it quickly. Uh, a little phrase that can help is, you sow a thought, you reap an action. If you sow an action, you reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a character. And if you sow a character, you reap a legacy. And so it all started whenever Joseph goes and he tells his brother his dream. Uh, Y'all are going to bow down to me. And then he has another dream and he's like, oh yeah, mom and dad are going to bow down too. And so it said that his brothers began to hate Joseph and to envy him. And that's where it started was they had these, these feelings in their heart, not just feelings, but thoughts of like, I'm better than Joseph. It's all about me, me first attitude. And they allowed that to stay there. They didn't take it captive. And then what it led to, um, those thoughts that they sowed, so they got together when Joseph was coming out to the field, and they were like, we should kill him. And they conspired to kill him. And then they throw him in a pit because Reuben, he's like, no, don't kill him. And then Judah sees some merchants traveling by and he goes what if we sell him so that his blood is not on our hands and all this hatred and this envy led to Judah being the one that steps out the spokesperson uh, like like you said earlier in this case it's not a spokesperson for a good situation and they sell Joseph to these Egyptian uh, merchants like y'all y'all know and you go on you sow a thought you reap an action and then you sow an action and you reap a habit. And so what happens next is they, they take Joseph's tunic, and they dip it in blood, and then they send it back to their father, and they go, is this your son's tunic, the tunic of many colors? And then Israel or Jacob, he goes, yes, this is, this is my son's tunic. And now I'm, and he just begins to grieve. And so all of his brothers, including Judah, they intentionally deceived Jacob, their dad, and right here, they begin to form a hatred in their heart, not just towards Jacob, but then like a, a disregard for their father, uh, not just the way that they grew up, but for their actual, the heart of their dad. Uh, they see him grieving and they say, I don't care, is what they effectively say. And so you sow an ha- action and you reap a habit, but then you go and you sow a habit and you reap a character. And further on in life, uh, as Pastor Michael already said, Judah's wife died. And so he's put in a hard situation. And sometimes we can, uh, how many of you have ever, I've done this plenty of times, you get in a tough situation and then you react and later you go, why did I do that? That was not good. I've done that plenty of times. And I used to be tempted to blame my reaction on the circumstance. But what I've realized is that the, the way I react is never because of some external thing. It's always something internal that's always been in my heart, and it's probably been hidden. And so, as Pastor Michael said, when you, when life squeezes you, what comes out? Is it going to be um, acid, or is it going to be the sweet apple juice? Or so, what's inside of us whenever life squeezes us? And we continue on, and then uh, you see Joseph, and he goes. Uh, his wife dies, and then he goes to shear a sheep. And he wants to sleep with a prostitute. And it turns out to be his daughter-in-law. And he had no idea about that. But his wife dies and he wants to be comforted. And he's, he's completely at this point disregarded everything that his father's taught him growing up. And, uh, and he goes and he sleeps with her. And then, as we've already said, uh, this transformation begins to come about. As soon as he realizes, I have messed up. I'm a bad guy. He acknowledges his sin. And, uh, and he repents. And then he begins to... Um, change the way that he's living. He becomes Tamar's caretaker, and it's like the whole process starts over again. So you sow an action, or you sow a thought, and you reap an action. Uh, the thought is, the thought in his heart, 
God, I'm a bad person and I've messed up and I need you. And then that eventually leads to him becoming Tamar's caretaker. And then later on in his life, um, later on in his life, whenever he's going back to Egypt and Benjamin gets slighted, uh, Judah's also, again, the spokesperson right here. He steps up and he goes, no, let me substitute my life to save you. And he's willing to leverage his life so that um, Benjamin could go back home because he remembers what his dad said of, if Benjamin doesn't come back, I'm going to go down to my grave and I'm going to die from this grief. And so right now Judah begins to, a love for his father comes back in his heart. And then after this, uh, we, we read later on that Judah was the one to lead the entire, uh, the entire band of Israel, the entire group, uh, back into Egypt. And it, which uh, we have all kinds, of, y'all have already talked about all that. And so at this point, there, here, there's a character that was formed in his heart that um, his dad can trust him and go, I, I want you to lead us back because out of all my brothers, I'm going to choose the middle child. And nobody ever chooses the middle child except for me. I married the middle child, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And so. And then you sow a character and you reap a destiny. And we've already talked about that with the blessing that uh, Jacob gave over, over Judah. He's going to be like a crouching tiger. His hand's going to be on his enemy's neck. And then Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. And, uh, and it's incredible because uh, we have actions that other people can see. We'll call those outward actions. And then there's actions that nobody could see. And we'll call those thoughts. Um, the thoughts that we choose to think about um, will eventually lead will eventually lead to us um, out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks and so if we can learn how to um, get our minds on God anytime we come into a, a difficult situation or even a good situation um, then the overflow is uh, is always going to be um, it's always going to be pleasant and life giving but if we don't learn how to uh, choose what we think about and we just let our mind think about anything that we want to then uh, our actions are, are also going to follow and then others are going to see those actions and our legacies are going to be made whether we like it or not we just get to choose how uh, how people remember us by so as i invite pastor michael back up here to stage stage i mean ryan thank you for taking that on i love that our church had today former leaders current leaders, future leaders as a part, because we're a church that will always be a multi-generational church. We're a church that will always have passing on and have pillars of the faith and passing on. And so the, again, daily actions define our legacy. I'm gonna ask if you would to stand with me today.